Well, the idea of Anastasia Palaszczuk travelling to the Tokyo Olympic Games has angered thousands of her fellow Queenslanders. Will she go or won't she? Well, even her detractors say she should. And joining me live now is LNP Senator Jared Rennick. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, there in Queensland, you probably have a, a bit of a better perspective of how this uh, trip will go down. What do you think Queenslanders will think of it? Think of her travelling to Tokyo and then coming back to hotel quarantine? Well, look, I think the issue that Queenslanders have with our Premier is her hypocrisy in the way she's dealt with COVID. Uh, I've got no problem with uh, people travelling overseas, um, but, you know, it, there's got to be one rule for all, and the problem is last week she cut international arrivals by half, um, and, you know, that may be the correct thing to do, but if she's going to do that, she shouldn't then travel herself. But I think the bigger issue is last week, for example, we had the State of Origin up here on the Sunday night, she locked down on the Monday throughout the week and then opened up again on the Saturday for another football game on the Sunday where, you know, tens of thousands of people could gather in one place with no masks on. And it's that hypocrisy between locking down <coughs> on individuals and small businesses who rely, you know, having their livelihood smashed and then, on the other hand, mm -hmm. travelling overseas herself or allowing big events to take place. And I think that's where people are a little bit sick and tired of the hypocrisy um, the other thing that I think needs to be noted too in, in regards to international arrivals is I, I, I've always thought it's silly that domestic travellers are quarantined within their own country. Uh, we should have open borders, at least within this Australia, and to put people who've come from another state where there might be one or two cases into quarantine for two weeks is just over the top, especially mm. when there's probably more cases of COVID within co quarantine than what there are out in the community. <clears throat> Well, that's on your government, though, isn't it? The federal government, because the vaccine rollout has been so slow. If we had uh, more vaccines in arms, that would have been avoided by now. Do you agree? Well, I mean, we our uh, vaccines have been manufactured from overseas. I mean, it's worth noting that CSL was sold by a Labor government 25 years ago, um, and CSL was originally set up to manufacture vaccines here. Um, in regards to the Pfizer vaccine, that can only be kept at uh, negative 70 degrees. So... You know, the devil's in the details with a lot of this stuff. I mean, the idea that, you know, if we'd have got the vaccines earlier, et cetera, et cetera. But people forget that those vaccines were only approved or, or you know, the discovery of the vaccine for this for COVID was only announced the week after Trump lost the election last year. So that was mid-November. It didn't get approved here in Australia mm. until January, late February, um, Pfizer and uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, so since then, we've been slowly ramping up the vaccine. We've now surpassed 8 million doses wow first doses. Uh, of that, over 70% of 70-year-olds have got their first dose. Over 50% of 50-year-olds have got their first dose. And, you know, we've managed to contain uh, deaths this year to just one from a person who contracted it from overseas. So I, I don't think it's our fault at all. There's no, no point in opening up international borders if, you know, letting 10 or 20,000 people travel each week if we're going to lock down 25 million people here in Australia. Well, OK, there's a lot of blame to be shared around. And you mentioned the United States, so let me go there. This is meant to be an enduring yep. strategic partnership between the, between the United States and Australia. We have millions of vaccines that we've seen come out of America. Why can't your government lean on the United States and the Biden administration, if we're such good friends, to give us more vaccines more quickly? Well, I mean, we're getting the AstraZeneca vaccine produced here in Melbourne now, and that's ramping up. Uh, we're getting the Moderna vaccines later in the year. Um, not, so I don't think that's ramping I, up, I, I think uh, Senator. An, an, it's in fact ramping down because it's not the preferred vaccine anymore. Well, the Pfizer doses here in Queensland, that's ramped up from 55,000 to 95,000 this week. It's yeah. increasing to 127,000 doses on a weekly basis from the end of the month. So I would disagree with you. I think you'll find that, the, that if, if, if you call the preferred vaccine for, her, for those who want to take it, the Pfizer one, well, that is ramping up in Queensland and it's going to double in dosage in the next four weeks. So um, I, I disagree with you mm. that um, it's, it's not being ramped up. No, I was talking about AstraZeneca because that is now the only preferred one over 60. Pfizer is preferred below 60, although that indemnity clause is given uh, to doctors. Well, the um, AstraZeneca one's been so, produced yeah, here in Melbourne, so I'm not sure why we need to rely on the US for that.
Well, we don't, but we need to rely on the US for Pfizer and Europe to get Pfizer supply here. And Pfizer is now going to be the vaccine that, uh, that vaccinates the bulk of the population. That's the point, isn't it? Well, well, the Pfizer vaccine is an mRNA vaccine that was only discovered in the last 12 months. I mean, this is a novel uh, vaccine. Mm. So the idea that we would have had been producing this uh, 12 months ago uh, isn't feasible because it wasn't actually invented or, or, or proven to be effective. Um, we have, no. did have a, a, a candidate at the U University of Queensland. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't pass the test because it gave false positives. Um, I've asked a question uh, to the Health Department on questions of notice what we can do to maybe, you know, look at that, given that a false positive isn't actually a bad thing in the sense that if, if the other, you know, if there's no other side effects, maybe that's not as bad as other vaccines mm. that do have side effects. But we were looking at a domestically produced vaccine. Unfortunately, it didn't pass the grade. But the idea that we would just have access to a vaccine that's only been invented in the last 12 months, uh, I think is totally unrealistic. Um, and the TGA has mm. been right to have a cautious approach uh, to the mRNA vaccines. Sure. MR, mRNA technology has only been used on cancer patients in the past, and even then that's only recent, yeah. recently in the last decade. Uh, they had, and you know, they go through a number of uh, trials. So this mRNA vaccine has been speeded mm -hmm. up anyway, uh, and we have got access to doses. Uh, maybe it's not the preferred dosage, but we have AstraZeneca as well, and we have Moderna coming on later in the year. Um, sure. And as I said, we have managed to keep people safe this year. Yeah, it still doesn't explain why we have the slowest rollout of, of the vaccine, any vaccine in the OECD. Do you know why that is? Uh, well, you know, we, we were probably, the TGA was one of the last uh, uh, health authorities to approve the AstraZeneca one. Uh, we had more time because we had a, a greater mm. control over COVID. We didn't have as much uh, outbreaks. And look, at the point, I mean, I think it's a mute point now. We're up to 8 million doses now we've got it rolling out about a million a week now by the end of september i expect you know we'd have over 50 percent okay. of people to have their first dosage if not earlier uh so mm. uh, you know it's to me the kpi that we need to be talking about is how well we're handling the virus and given that we've had probably the minimal number of deaths across you know most countries this year in the world and we've our livelihoods and our co economy is now stronger than what it was pre-covid i think we're handling COVID very well OK, let's uh, talk about Julia Banks because she certainly dropped a grenade in her book and the subsequent interviews. She's accused um, the Prime Minister and other uh, Liberal ministers of really perpetuating this culture of sexism. Uh, she claims that the Prime Minister uh, is a bully and he mansplained her. What do you think about those allegations? Uh OK, well, look, I haven't read her book. I did watch the 7.30 interview last night. I mean, I don't condone the alleged behaviour if it took place. Um, obviously, I can't confirm that because I wasn't there. I wasn't in Parliament at the time. Um, look, I, I, you know, my, my view is you shouldn't be in Parliament if you don't know how to treat people with respect. Uh, I, I know that... Uh, I, I can only speak for myself, but, you know, uh, I, I certainly, you know, wouldn't wouldn't sort of carry on like those alleged... Uh, that alleged behaviour last night. But... It's pretty difficult to um, sort of say any more than that because I just don't know the details. I wasn't in the room, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're not a female uh, MP in the Liberal Party, so I guess you have a, a very different experience and that is certainly pointing out the very obvious, Jared Rennick. But uh, do you at least have some sympathy for the complaints that are made from women inside of your party? And it's not just Julia Banks, is it? Uh, well, look, any time that there's, uh, you know... Uh, allegations or unwanted sexual behaviour, that should not be condoned. It's not welcome in our party. Uh, and I would call out anyone, you know, on the basis that it was proved correct, um, not to do it. Um, it it's just shouldn't, shouldn't happen at all in this... I mean, it shouldn't happen at all. It shouldn't happen in this day and age, period. Um, and I have to admit I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that um, it, it does, or does occur uh, to the extent that it does you know, that we've heard about. Um, I, I know myself, like, by the time I've finished in Parliament, I'm, I'm stuffed, I go home to bed sort of thing. So, uh, you know, where these people find their energy to go out and, and carry on like that's beyond me. But, you know, we should be focusing on the job, which is improving the lives of all Australians. OK. Senator Rennick, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for your time on AM Agenda. We will see you soon.